Thanks, Paulina. Uh, thanks, Mark and uh, Rosaya for inviting me to uh, speak in this uh, seminar. Yeah. And I uh, would also like to thank uh, fellow uh, students and classmates from uh, Lingnan University. Uh, to be frank, I'm the first time uh, to speak in this university, although I have been speaking in other universities for a few times already. Yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm also very excited because I'm the first time to speak in a uh, liberal arts education university. Yeah. <laughs> yes. So I have to change my power mic. <laughs> First of all, I want to do a uh, quick survey uh, to understand better about you. Uh, I want to I want to know uh, where do you come from. Can you? I know you have uh, three faculties in your university, right? Uh, may I know uh, who uh, who are from the Faculty of Arts? Okay. Who are from the Faculty of Business? Oh. It seems that the intelligence given to me is wrong. <laughs> okay. Uh, finally, who, who is from uh, Faculty of Social Science? Then? Okay. Oh, to my surprise, uh, quite a lot of uh, students coming from uh, Faculty of Arts. Okay. Fortunately, I, I also prepared some GIS application for uh, history. <laughs> okay. <coughs> Uh, another question I want to ask. How many of you have heard about the term of GIS? No? Only, <laughs> only one? <laughs> so I don't need to ask a second question because I want to ask how many of you have used the GIS? <laughs> so, anyway. Uh, today my uh, topic is Location Intelligence in Smart City. First of all, I do a uh, quick introduction of myself. Uh, my name is Paul Choi. I'm the Managing Director of SV China Hong Kong. We are, I will also introduce my company. I'm also a professional member of Hong Kong Institute of Surveyors and World Institute of Chartered Surveyors. I'm a land surveyor uh, as my profession. Okay, talking about my company, uh, Astri, actually our full name is Environmental Systems Research, Research Institute. Yeah. But I have to clarify that our software is not only used in our environmental research, okay? Yeah. Uh, our company, we have uh, 80 offices in uh, 130 countries. Our office, we, we, we even have office in Iraq, okay? Because uh, they need uh, GIS technology to rebuild their countries after the civil war, okay? We have over uh, 3,000 plus staff from uh, uh, 70 countries. Uh, we are the top four uh, privately held software company in the world, and also the second largest privately held software company in the United States. Yeah. We are also the, uh, award, we are honorary uh, awarded the top 25 education technology solution providers. So uh, actually in uh, Hong Kong, uh, almost all universities will use, including yours, uh, will use our software to teach GIS. And also, we are uh, starting from 215, we are running a very generous program to donate our cloud based GIS to all primary and secondary schools in Hong Kong. Hong Kong. Yeah. So, even the primary school students or secondary school students, they, they, they start to learn to use GIS. This is our office. Our office is responsible for the geography of uh, Hong Kong and Macau. This is our some of our clients. I show this to you uh, because I want to let you know GIS has been used in many different aspects. No matter uh, government departments or universities or consulting engineers or even TVB. The TV Broadcast company, they also use GIS. Okay. So, uh, today's topic is about location intelligence. Location is fundamental to all aspects of activities. 
according to some uh, articles and research, uh, about 80% of information has location component. Okay. You can imagine how many times you will ask the question of where in a day. You ask yourself, I think maybe a dozen of times at least, to ask the questions of where, right? You can see uh, a lot of uh, questions about where is uh, very important. Say, where do you buy your home? <coughs> is it very important? Yeah, it's a very big decision yeah, of your life, okay? And uh, a lot of uh, city problem is also related to where problem. Because uh, today this seminar is organized by the science unit, so I have to mention science. <laughs> okay. So we invented the science of where. Okay. So uh, instead of uh, telling you what science of where, I let you watch a video. Where digital transformation is taking place and the world changes in the blink of an eye. Ezra users are unlocking the full potential of data to solve real problems in real time. They use location and geography to integrate, analyze, and understand all types of data. <coughs> they embrace the science of GIS, science that Ezra pioneered, and its users continue to advance. Organizations everywhere see data in new ways through a common visual language inspired and empowered by the science of where, pushing the boundaries of geography to create deeper insight and understanding. The science of where is the science of exploration and navigation, the science of the grand and the granular. This is the science of development and the science of sustainability, the science of power and the science of peace, the science of will, the science of wonder, the science of where. So what is the science of where? In short, it is the science of geography combining with the technology or implemented with the technology of GIS. <coughs> then, because so few of you know what is GIS, so I have to introduce you what is GIS. GIS stands for Geographic Information System. Using computer hardware, software, and a ton of raw data, we can explore the fundamental principle of geography that location is important in people's lives. Using GIS, we can view, understand, question, visualize, and interpret data in visual ways that reveal relationships and patterns which allows us to make better decisions. For example, a meteorologist might study the paths of hurricanes to predict where and when they might occur in the future. A city planner can choose the best location for a new park or hospital, ensuring that they are built in the place where they need it the most. GIS is essential to understanding what has happened, what is happening, and what will happen in geographic space. Geographic understanding brings wisdom, and with wisdom, we can make better decisions to create a brighter future. So, GIS integrates everything. It connects people, process things and data about them. Uh, actually, I, I, um, I, I like this slide very much because uh, it can simply explain what the GIS does. Actually, GIS, I would say it has three major functions. First of all, it has a system, it is a system of record. It helps you to record all the spatial and uh, related attribute data with time. With, when you organize your data in a organized manner, and then you can start to analyze it and gain the insight of your data. So it is also a system of insight. 
Okay, after you have done the analysis and derive some result from your data, you want to share with your peers, your classmates, or even to the public. GIS can help you to, especially the web gist, uh, can help you to disseminate and distribute and present your data easily to the to the to the to your audience. So it's also a system of engagement. Okay, uh, the second part of my topic is about smart city. So, how is GIS related to smart city? Our cities is increasingly challenged. We are facing a lot of lots of problems. Okay, and more and more people is moving to the cities. Okay, we are facing environmental problem, housing problem, pollution problem, and social conflict. <coughs> The answer to all this challenge is that we need better understanding and more collaboration. So we need smart approaches to solve this problem. We lack tech survey leadership. We need a good system of workers so that we can use the data. We also need to make the decision no longer based on subjective judgment. Instead of, we need to do the decision based on data, based on science. We also need the government department to collaborate. We also want to have real-time awareness. We also want the citizen engagement. So, man, I think you have heard smart city this term many times. But what do you think uh, smart city is? How city is a smart? Okay. In my opinion, uh, a smart city should be safe community should be a well-worn community, should be a livable community, should be a healthy community, should be a prosperous city, should be a sustainable city. Now, I'm going to use a few videos to illustrate to you uh, how GIS can help to achieve that few aspects. Okay. First of all, I would <coughs> like to show you a video of California Cal Cal uh, Governor Office of Emergency Service. As you know, uh, I think, uh, especially California, has a lot of disasters, uh, hill fire, earthquake, flooding. Yeah, so they, so the U.S. government has paid a lot of effort and resources in the emergency response to make their community, to make their society more resilient to the disaster. You know, just like the typhoon happening a month ago. Yeah, you can see how important a city is resilient. Okay. That means resilient is how quick you can recover from disaster, how strong you can uh, uh, to the attack of the natural disaster. Okay. My name is Dan Bout, and I serve as the Assistant Director for Response at the California Governor's Office of Emergency Services. Cal OES is responsible for all disasters that occur in California that exceed the locals' abilities to respond to them. Far and away, the biggest challenge we have as it relates to data in an incident is synthesizing data into information that's useful. So there's a huge potential for miscommunication. And as you get more and more data feeds, that becomes a more and more silly issue. Here is the latest on the breaking news we're following out of Northern California, a strong earthquake. Parts of Napa got hit hard, hammered by this quake early this morning. One example. The Napa earthquake truly showed us the power of visualizing information. The ability that we had at that time to create flat maps in a not so speedy way kind of showed a gap that we had in our ability to really visualize the information and get it out in a fast manner. You know, the people on the ground, they need the tools so that problems can be solved during activation, so resources can be deployed timely and effectively. So during the Napa earthquake, the decision was made to bring Esri in to kind of show us what is possible, you know, what capabilities they have. That was actually probably one of those key use cases for moving to a digital map. The ability to start seeing water leaks in real time, I'm like, okay, when did that happen? Three minutes ago. That is something that you couldn't do with a paper map. We went from at best 5% of online products to 95%. And that actually happened in about 
say six or nine months out of um, the map <coughs> input. Now you have all the current data that's that's available, and, and it may change as you're looking at it, and it's real time. You're looking at what's happening now, not what happened 12 hours ago. What they showed us that day during Napa earthquake was a story. It's interactive. It allows us to take a look at the shape map, take a look at the shelters, take a look at whatever information that we're discussing. This allows us to be able to really give decision makers what they need. GIS changed the way we do business. We now have the go-to products. We know that this is what we need to do as a requirement. So that would be part of our common operational picture. During the fires, was the first time we really used the dashboards this year. And we were able to provide a visual of acreage burn, current damage assessments. The dashboard provides that snapshot that saves time. You know, instead of somebody stopping in the middle of an operation to brief someone, they can just walk in, look at the wall, and see exactly what they want to see. One of the areas that I think we're deliberately going to move to is taking a tool like our GIS mapping capability and using that as a mitigation tool. Where I see us going is to get hooked up to every single county statewide. So when an event happens, we flip the switch on and absorb their data and then I can just visualize. The bottom line of risk management is we are going to be successful. There's not a lot of trying involved. You have to make it work because it's, you know, it's people's lives, it's families, it's, it's their property. I mean, it's the things that are most core to our identity and, and, and to who we see ourselves as, as a nation. The technology is there and we know that it's available and we've leveraged to the best of our abilities. It's my dream come true. I mean, it's, it's great. Not emerging, GIS can save lives, okay, and be used in this kind of life and death situation. Second, how GIS can help a community to be well worn and livable. Uh, this case is how the Bay Area Rapid Transit is a San Francisco Bay Area. Now we are try to replicate the success of this in here, the good to pay area, right? Uh, I think in, I think a week ago, there is an incident of uh, four MTL lines have a signal problem. So you will see how chaos is, chaotic is, is this, okay? If you don't have a well-run transportation system, so now we have a look. I'm Travis Engstrom, Manager of Information Systems for the Bay Area Rapid Transit District. We're the fifth largest uh, heavy rail in the United States, and we operate the subways in downtown San Francisco, downtown Oakland, and we've now extended service into five Bay Area counties. We have about 450,000 riders a day, and we think within a few years that number may grow to as high as 650,000. We really need hardcore concrete data in this day and age in order to make decisions. And that requires new technology. GIS is what brought that to the table. What GIS has done is it has provided a picture to their data. Instead of people making decisions based upon those bits and bytes, they can visually see that information. We collected years of data that we poured our heart and soul into, and now for the first time, made it available in one single system. very large agency that has a lot of activity happening in our stations and a lot of departments and to be able to just pull up on my computer the enterprise GIS system and see what the site plans are, see what the maintenance department is doing at the station, to just in one place access all of that information and know exactly what's going on at every station. I couldn't do my job without enterprise GIS. As part of our mobile strategy, we wanted to make sure that the data that's available on your desktop is available through a web portal, and it's also ubiquitous across mobile devices to ensure that you can do your work from any device, anywhere in the world, at any time. So as a technician is using his handheld device, he's updating real time all the work that he's performing. And as he updates that information, it's now in the system, it's being sent to the engineers in their office so they can review the exact same information that the technician is using in the field. We stopped thinking about the server, the cable, 
programming. We now think about a business case. We started to add up how many projects had really benefited, and the count was nearly 100 in less than the first year. Through the Enterprise GIS system, we can actually drive throughout the entire system any distance we want. We can even hold job safety briefings without ever leaving our office. Track allocation, ops planning, the capabilities are unlimited. We can do our own analysis. We can pull up these layers of information that we need to get our own maps printed. And um, it saves us both time and money not having to go out and hire a consultant to do this analysis for us. I can do it in a matter of 15 minutes and have the same information that would have cost me several thousand dollars. We discovered that for every dollar that we were spending on our enterprise GIS, we were getting, on average, $3.11 back. It has been accepted as now a district-wide enterprise application with dedicated staff and annual resources. I don't think so there's any project that starts where people don't talk about the benefits that they can gain by using the data that comes out of Enterprise GIS. I believe we just scratched the surface of what we're going to be able to do with this tool. So we're in the very beginning stages of building something that is going to be incredible. I love the old adage that all of us are smarter than any of us. And with an Enterprise GIS and a collection of all of these different resources, we make better decisions for the future. For this video, I like the, I like, there's a statement I like most, is the lady said, I couldn't do my job with Dell Enterprise GIS. So you can see how important is the GIS to the organization, right? Okay, the third video is that, apart from government, apart from the transportation system, a smart city has to have smart business as well, okay? Because this business support our economic activities, okay? So next, I, I would like to show you a case study on Walgreens. How many of you know, have you heard about Walgreens? <laughs> yeah, Walgreens actually is the main equivalent in the United States, okay? <laughs> they are a drugstore, beauty store, okay? Yeah, uh, you can see them everywhere almost, yeah. But they, they use GIS to run their business, okay, and to help to make the community healthier as well. <coughs> Jillian Elder. I'm the director of our Enterprise Location Intelligence team at Walgreens. Our Enterprise Location Intelligence group is well placed right in our corporate strategy organization. What this means is that we're well positioned in order to service a bunch of the divisions throughout the company. So we end up partnering with divisions across the entire company to improve upon the information that's going into their decisions. Understanding our customers, where they live, where they work, why they're shopping us is the core of what we do, and that's in many ways a spatial question. Our work and our and our spatial analysis and our mapping technology is is centered around serving customers. Walgreens has started an initiative to offer flu shots at nearly every location. With a, a network of 8,000 stores, we really have the ability to identify sales trends of products that are relating to flu, and with that, a flu index was created. Now the way we get this data is we use our prescriptions for antiviral medications and that for us is our best indicator of flu activity because generally speaking when someone has a positive flu test, uh, they are getting prescribed an antiviral to help treat them. When we combine that in with our mapping applications, we were able to, before the CDC could report on it, understand where flu was happening throughout the country. It was very important for us to have a simple mapping platform that would illustrate what we were showing in the flu index each week. What the CDC does is their data is reported on a two-week lag, whereas inside of a week we're able to turn around data. So I think that you know that really helped us in terms of the credibility of the flu index because ours was, was closer to real time and, and I think that was very important. What we've been able to do is show people how important having that spatial lens on our information and on our analytics is. Walgreens is a 24-hour company. That means we need to be able to provide data on any device, at any time, anywhere. So many of the important decisions that we make within our company are based on location. Where our stores are going to be, how we want to merchandise those stores in terms of the items we want to have in those stores. And all of that is really driven by the wall map tool that we have. 
wall map allows us to provide spatial solutions to people that aren't experts in GIS. So we were able to deploy solutions that are, are much more user friendly and easy to learn. We made it broad based so all of our data is there and very easy to turn layers on and off and to have some basic dashboarding so that anybody here at the company can consume Walgreen information in a map format. Mergers and Acquisitions uses WallMap on a daily basis. Each of our managers are responsible for territories across the country, and they use WallMap to identify competitor locations. We look at distances, we look at population of certain Walgreens trade areas, we look at demographic information and how that can play into the business retention that we expect when we purchase pharmacies. For our users that go out into the field, we needed WallMap Pro Mobile, <laughs> And what that really does is allow people to use any sort of mobile device when they're out in the field so that they can look at data about our stores right there. Now we can actually have a tablet that follows us as you go, the map pans as you move, and I can go ahead and take each notes against an aerial background, against a map background, against a market share background, uh, against our stores over the top of our competitors right there <laughs> What's amazing about the GIS platform is not just all the data that it can aggregate, uh, but its ability to display that to make it easier for executives to understand what's going on and make the right strategic choice for the company. At the core of how people behave is geography. And strategically having a geocentric approach and thinking locationally and geographically is huge. If you're not, you're missing something. So you can notice that, especially for the business students, you can notice that how the retailer, retailer use GIS to make their business more profitable and more well run. Okay? But at the same time, they also contribute to the community by reporting the possible full outbreak. So do you notice that they, they know there is a full outbreak even earlier than CDC? the center of disease uh, control in uh, communicable disease in the US, okay, yeah. So uh, you can see how GIS can help. So um, do some advertisement. Uh, we make GIS software. Our GIS software is called ArcGIS. This is a GIS platform for smart city. It can <coughs> organize and leveraging stack stakeholder interactions we support open data, new initiatives, community portal, okay. connect all the stakeholders. <clears throat> Actually, now is, uh, I think maybe two decades ago, GIS is only available on your desktop, okay? But now, GIS, you can, what you can see from the video, you can use GIS uh, anywhere, anytime, okay? Even on tablet, on web browser, yeah. If you are good on programming, you can use our API to do some uh, uh, GIS applications. It's also available as SaaS. SaaS means software as a service. You can use our cloud based GIS, as I mentioned, that we donate to the uh, school. Okay. ArcGIS can allow you to assess and integrate all data types. Okay. Usually you will use Excel, the tabular data, but we are, we are using the GIS, you can uh, assess a lot of 3D data, real-time data, raster image, satellite image, air photo image, okay. Okay, um, I know you have three faculties, one of these is the faculty of business, so actually GIS has a lot of application in business analysis and location intelligence, you can see uh, GIS can help to uh, help to the field, field to store supply chain checking. Uh, they can also help you to um, uh, to do the site selection for opening your new store. Okay, you can also um, analyze the census data to determine your uh, market space. I would like to share with you a few. Uh, case study. The first case is uh, about the Bank of America. I think most of you know Bank of America. They use GIS to track every single transaction by customer, location, time, and channel. They accumulate 60 months of this uh, transactional data 
historical trans transaction data is about 20 terabytes data. Yeah. They combine the capacity of each branch and ATM, cost and revenues of each facility locations. They analyze the customer usage patterns. They, the customer only use the ATM to withdraw money, or they use the ATM to overdraft, to loan money, okay? Or by relocating and optimizing the branches and ATM, because to maintain a branch or even ATM, it costs money, right? They reduce the annual expense by 8 million US dollars. Even the Forbes also report this. It's, it helped Bank of America to, to add $1 per share with this saving. They use the <coughs> customer behavioral data to find them where they should uh, add the new ATM or add a new branch. The second example is Starbucks. I think you won't be strange about Starbucks, right? Actually, Starbucks in US, to open a new store, it cost them two million US dollars. Okay. So they have to be very careful and to be very, each decision of opening a new store must be data driven okay, and scientific. Okay. So they use GIS to help them to, 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 to plan their new, new store opening. Okay. They use the traffic, demographic, and then use data to make the decision. That you have a look of 700 video. plus partners, what we at Starbucks call employees, in 15 countries start their new store journey in Atlas, our market planning and business intelligence system. What you see in front of you is Atlas for mainland China, where we currently have 1,200 stores and are now opening a new store almost every year. Sorry, every day. <laughs> One of the key differentiators <laughs> is how we resonate with our local community. Because of this, new store decisions are made by local partners in the field. Let's go to one of these local markets, a tiny market, population 2 million, and that named Guangxi. Well, we have eight locations, but are growing fast. One of our local partners in the field, Penny Chen, works, makes, works and makes decisions around new stores in Nanning. Penny can't do her job without Atlas. Here are some of the many layers that are integral to her decision making around new stores. Things like trade areas, retail clusters and generators, traffic and transportation nodes, and demographics. After analyzing a new market and neighborhood, Penny utilizes the Atlas to pinpoint new store decisions. For instance, in this part of Nanning, three new office towers will be completed over the next two months. After adding a new target area, Penny has provided a workflow window which helps her progress the site through approval, permitting, construction, and eventually opening. This is how we start with the idea of a new store and bring it all the way through to the cutting of the green ribbon. And the same thing happens here in the U.S. In fact, our most recent store opened on July 3rd in Los Galpos, California. GIS is also very useful in public health and demographic information. Yeah. You can see, you can use uh, GIS to analyze the population change in Korea. You can also study the poverty, the relationship between poverty and school for the student in social science. Uh, open addition, the phenomenon of open addition in the community, the drug abuse. Yeah. You, for the, for the students studying uh, politics, you can also analyze the uh, voter characteristic in the election. So uh, I would like to share with you a few uh, real projects. This is a uh, Jockey Cup funded project uh, done by Hong Kong U, they call Family Project. Actually, this, uh, if I have time, I can show you the real website to you. Actually, they use a lot of uh, uh, census data, population data, to derive, they call it happiness index for different uh, areas of uh, Hong Kong. Okay, they, you can use different variables to do comparison. You see, another another uh, cases is the, also from Hong Kong U. Uh, they uh, they have a center. They have a center called Center for Suicide Research and Prevention. 
they use GIS uh, and use a three layer approach and to do a property research from three perspectives from individual, community, and population perspective. GIS tell them to analyze the problem from community and population perspective. You can see the distribution of poor defined by poverty line in an area is compared against different parameters in the sense of, say, age, marital status, uh, number of family members, children. <coughs> GIS can help you, can also help you to, to locate the hotspot of your concern. Say, is there any hotspot for suicide, divorce, or domestic violence? You can quickly see the trend. This is another uh, case from CUHA. Uh, <clears throat> they use, they develop a geographically and temporary weighted regression analysis to help uh, to understand the trend of property price. Now, the high property price has uh, become a social problem. It's no longer an investment problem, right? Yeah. So it's how to. This uh, is another um, case study from the University of Pennsylvania. Uh, they use, they still use the traditional uh, survey to do the social survey to understand the community, but they put all the data into GIS. And then GIS can provide framework for you to understand the human behavior. The GIS can be used to map say, the child welfare cases to determine whether incidents of child abuse or neglect cluster together in certain areas or disease related to neighborhood poverty. Okay. It can also help you to identify the community needs and assets, improve the delivery of social services, okay. and it also helps to communicate the current situation with the community. Uh, this is for history students, okay? This is from Stanford University. Uh, they have a very interesting project called His Spatial History Project, okay? They use GIS uh, for the major tools for spatial analysis visualization of further advanced historical research. This, in this project, they use GIS to study the spatial transformation of meat production. <laughs> Uh, from 1849 to 1901 in San Francisco. This is a quote from the principal researcher. They said, using the GIS, we are able to see surprising spatial trends in meat production and distribution in the last decades of the 19th century. This trend will not be visible without using digital tools. The GIS breath line into old documents. So, history is very old thing, can also combine with the new thing, GIS technology. So this is a uh, 3D presentation of how the distribution of, uh, of the butcher and slaughterhouse in San Francisco in, at different times. You can see they, they, um, they, 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 they change from a very cluster pattern to a very dispersed pattern. <coughs> For the students studying politics, GIS can also help you to answer the question, say, is the voting pattern very across the country? Where do the geographic variations occur of the voter behavior? Uh, what factor trigger this variation? And where are the best opportunity for political persuasion? You can un also under the social pattern. More importantly, is to help you to formulate your election campaign. How is the where you should preach what? Okay. This is another uh, application. You can also because in America there were uh, a multi ethnic uh, society, so it's very important to understand the distribution of the uh, voters coming from different races. Okay and so that you can uh, formulate your election strategy the best to, to the distribution. This is another example of the UK by elections. They also use the dashboard to uh, show the current uh, election. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> 
Next, I want to uh, introduce you. Okay, you have seen a lot of uh, example, right? Of using GIS in the area related to your study. But you, you may ask, how you can use this tool in your study, right? Frankly speaking, GIS is not rocket science. You don't have to be a computer scientist to use this tool. It is super easy to use, okay? Don't be afraid of it. I would say, if you want to use GIS in your study, you need to go through four steps. The first step is data, okay? I think for any, no matter what, we, what study and research you are, you, you are doing, data is the, is the basic, okay? No matter you use GIS or not, okay? But in GIS, the data is uh, surprisingly important, okay? But now, you're very lucky. You, are very, you, you have many sources to find uh, geospatial data now. First of all, you can uh, find the data from our RGS Online, uh, we call Living Atlas. It has a worldwide data. A lot of, I think, few thousand, few tens of thousand data sets, some of, uh, from uh, government open data, from uh, contributed by our users. It, it, uh, the, the, the variety is very wide, okay? It has population, it has a topography, yeah. It has image. <clears throat> For the local data, you can use, uh, we have uh, set up a open geospatial data in Hong Kong, okay? Uh, we have uh, more than 130 data layers you can use about Hong Kong. And also, if you can't find the data on the web, then you can collect the data on your own. Now, this is uh, easier than ever, okay? First of all, uh, we have a tool you can install in your Excel. So, sometimes you can find, uh, sometimes you, when you collect the data, it will be in Excel format, usually. So, you can easily drag the Excel data into the map, it becomes your data, on data, okay? Also, you, we also offer you two apps, three apps you can use, the Collector for ArcGIS and Survey123. Collector for ArcGIS is a very easy to use app for you to collect data and also the photos and also the GPS location of your phone. With Survey123, you can design a form or your own form without any programming. You just need an Excel or you, you just need to go to a website to, do, to, to define what the field you want to appear in the form and then the form will appear in your iPhone or Android phone and allow you to start collecting data in the field. Okay, once you have collected your data and they will go into our cloud platform or cloud, uh, into the GIS, then you can start Visualizing it, actually one of the <clears throat> most powerful functions of GIS is the visualize, visualization. You can visualize your data in many different ways. We have a uh, smart mapping, you can use different kind of uh, thematic map, symbology. You can use uh, different attributes of your data to symbolize the map and see the trends of your data. If your data has time, you can also do the spatial temporal uh, exploration, you can also have a space time map to see the uh, relationship of the data in space and time. Okay. This is another, uh, you can see they have, uh, you can also animate the data at different time as well. Okay. Easily. You don't need to write any program to do this. It's all built in in the software. <laughs> Okay, when you visualize there is a train or there's a pattern, you can do some analysis using GIS to see uh, what pattern, where is the pattern, how, what's the extent of the pattern, or what factor is driving to the pattern to occur, okay? Or do the site selection, just like the case you, you have seen, okay? <clears throat> The hotspot analysis is my favorite analysis because it helps you to uh, find the, any cluster or concentration of points of your data in the space. And they also give you a stochastic 
probability of this uh, pattern occurrence. So you can use uh, a lot of different kind of analysis. You, if you, 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 you know how to use the R statistic in, in, with the Python script, we also have a new, uh, new technique called spatial statistics. You, you, you may know statistics, right? But you may not heard about spatial statistics. Okay. It's the statistic of spatial data. You can also do the space-time pattern mining. Okay, so the, come to the last step. When you have got your the analysis result, you want to share with your uh, your peers or uh, your classmates or even to the general public. We have a very powerful tool called Story Maps. This is my favorite. Everyone has a story to tell, right? Yeah, you can you can transform your study or research into a story. Okay engage and inspire your audience. We have a, a lot, many different kind of templates for you to use to plug in your, 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 your contents. Again, there's no programming, no coding involved to make this map. Okay, you won't believe it. Yeah. You just need your content. You just need to make your map. If you don't like this, you can also build your own web app, your own web page by just drag and, uh, drag and drop and click and fill click. Again, no coding is required. If you want to deserve to, 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 to tell people through a mobile apps, you can also use our tool called App Studio to make a native apps on iPhone, Android, or even Windows Phone. Again without any coding. Okay. Okay, to conclude uh, my talk, okay, uh, I would like to code a to use a code of mark in your web page, okay, in your university web page. Yeah. GIS and science software is general education, is part of general education as providing you the tools you should store in your toolbox, okay? Ready for use when you need it, okay? Thank you very much.